A population P obeys a logistic growth model. It satisfies the differential equation shown here where P is greater than zero. We want to determine the interval for which the population is increasing, determine the interval for which the population is decreasing, and then assuming P of zero equals four, we want to find P of sixty-four. The given differential equation is an autonomous differential equation because it fits the form dp dt equals f of p, where the derivative function is only a function of p and the independent variable t only appears in the derivative. The equilibrium solutions occur where dp dt equals zero, and if dp dt is positive, p is increasing. If dp dt is negative, then p is decreasing. So before we answer these questions, let's first determine the equilibrium solutions. That would be the values of p for where dp dt is equal to zero. So we want to solve the equation zero equals three divided by 1,100 times p times the quantity 11 minus p. We'll notice how this is equal to zero when p equals zero or when p equals 11 but we're given that P is greater than zero. So to answer part A and B, we need to consider the sine of dP dt over two intervals. The open interval from zero to 11 and the open interval from 11 to infinity. Again, our goal is to find the sine of dP dt. For example, if we consider dP dt when P equals, let's say, one, notice how we'd have three divided by 1,100 times one times 10, which would be positive, which means the population is increasing over this interval. When P equals, let's say, 12, well, when P is 12, we'd have three divided by 1,100 times 12 times negative one, which would be negative, which means over this entire interval, the population is decreasing. So again, we'll say the population is increasing when P is greater than zero and less than 11, and the population is decreasing when P is greater than 11. Let's verify these results by looking at the slope field generated by the given differential equation. Notice how when P is on the open interval from zero to 11, all the slopes are positive because the population is increasing over this interval and notice how when P is greater than 11, all the slopes are negative, which verifies the population is decreasing over this interval for P. The slope field also shows the equilibrium point at P equals 11. And now for part C, we want to find P of 64. And while there's a shortcut method using the information provided here on the right, we're going to go ahead and solve this differential equation and then find the particular solution using the initial condition, and then find P of 64. So let's do this on the next slide. We can solve this differential equation using separation of variables, as well as using partial fraction decomposition. To get a function of P times dP on the left, and a function of T times dT on the right, let's multiply both sides by dT, and also divide both sides by P times the quantity 11 minus P. That will give us one divided by P times the quantity 11 minus P dP equals three divided by 1,100 dT. And now we'll perform partial fraction decomposition on this fraction here. So one divided by P times the quantity 11 minus P is equal to A divided by the factor of P plus B divided by the factor of 11 minus P. And now from here, we'll multiply both sides of the equation by P times the quantity 11 minus P, which will give us the equation one equals A times the quantity 11 minus P plus B times P. Now to find the values of A and B, let's first select P equals zero. Well, if P equals zero, that would give us the equation one equals, if P equals zero, this would be 11A, and this term would be zero. So A equals one eleventh. Now let's select P equals 11 because it would make this factor equal to zero. So if P is 11, we'd have the equation one equals, again, this would be zero and this would be 11B. 
So b is also equal to 1 11th. So now we can write this fraction as a sum. We'd have 1 11th divided by p plus 1 11th divided by the quantity 11 minus p dp equals 3 divided by 1,100 dt. And now to clear these fractions in the numerator, let's multiply both sides of the equation by 11. So simplifying on the left, we just have 1 over p plus 1 over 11 minus p dp equals on the right, this 11 simplifies to 1, 1100 simplifies to 100, so we have 3 hundredths dt. Now for the next step, we'll integrate both sides of the equation, so we'll have the integral of 1 divided by p plus 1 divided by the quantity 11 minus p dp equals the integral of 3 one hundredths dt. Remember we're told that p is greater than zero, so the integral of one over p with respect to p would be natural log p, and then the integral of one over the quantity 11 minus p requires u substitution, where u equals 11 minus p, and u equals negative one dp, so the integral of one over the quantity 11 minus p with respect to p would be minus natural log of the quantity 11 minus p, and we'll put the constant of integration on the right. The integral of three one hundredths with respect to t would be three one hundredths t plus, let's call it c sub one. And now we'll combine these two logarithms using our property of logs. Because we're subtracting these two logs with the same base, we can combine these two logs as a natural log of p divided by the quantity 11 minus p equals three one hundredths t plus c sub one. And that is all for p. We can write this log equation as an exponential equation where we'd have e raised to this power here equals this fraction, or we can also exponentiate both sides of the equation, meaning e raised to this power must equal e raised to this power. Well, e raised to the power of natural log of p divided by the quantity 11 minus p is just p divided by the quantity 11 minus p. And on the right side, we'd have e raised to the power of three one hundredths t, and then because we're adding the exponents here, we can write this as times e raised to the power of c sub one. Well, e raised to the power of c sub one is just another constant. Let's call e to the power of c sub one c sub two. So we have p divided by the quantity 11 minus p equals c sub two times e raised to the power of three one hundredths times t. Now before we go any further, let's use the initial condition to find the value of c sub two. Remember we were told that p of zero equals four. So if p of zero equals four, we can substitute four for p and zero for t and find the value of c sub two. Let's do this on the next slide. We'd have the equation four divided by the quantity 11 minus four equals c sub two times e raised to the power of three one hundredths times zero. So we have four sevenths equals, well this would just be e to the zero which is one, so c sub two. So c sub two equals four sevenths. So substituting four sevenths for c sub two, we'd have p divided by the quantity 11 minus p equals, again c sub two is four sevenths, let's write this as four times e raised to the power of three one hundredths t divided by seven. And now from here to solve for p, let's cross multiply, which would give us this product must equal this product. So we'd have seven p equals forty four e raised to the power of three one hundredths t and then minus four p times e raised to the power of three one hundredths t. Let's go ahead and get the p terms on the same side, so we'll add four p e to the three hundredths t to both sides. That'd give us seven p plus four p e to the three one hundredths t equals forty four times e raised to the power of three one hundredths t. And now we'll factor the left.
the numerator would now just be 44, and then we have divided by, well, four times e to the 3 hundredths t times e to the negative 3 hundredths t would just be four, and then we'd have plus seven e raised to the power of negative three one hundredths t. So p of t in this form, or this form, are acceptable, but it is more common to write the solution to a differential equation expressing logistic growth in this form here. And remember, our final question was to find p of 64. So p of 64 is equal to, in this form, 44, divided by the quantity four plus seven times e, raised to the power of negative three one hundredths times sixty-four. And now we'll go to the calculator. So we have forty-four divided by the quantity four plus seven times e, raised to the power of negative three divided by one hundred times sixty-four, right arrow, close parenthesis, and enter. To four decimal places, this would be approximately 8.7540. So going back to our first slide, so again, P of 64 is approximately 8.7540. We'll look at this example again using the shortcut method, using the notes provided here on the right in the next example. I hope you found this helpful.